Hey everybody and welcome to another one of these little lightning videos that uh, we've been doing. This one is going to be about session IDs. More specifically, session IDs in comparison with phone numbers. We're going to be going over some of the technicals about session IDs and discussing the advantages that session ID has over a phone number, why we've chosen to go down this path with the session ID. Uh, I'm going to try and leave some of the technicals out just to make this video a little bit more accessible for everybody, uh, but there is an article covering really a lot of the same things I'm going to be talking about in this video, so if you want a little bit more technical information, feel free to go and check that one out, and it has uh, a bit of a deeper dive into the session ID. So obviously, if you've ever used session, you know that there's that 66 character long ID that's your session ID, and that is intended to be your digital identity. It's a new kind of identity that's private and secure and anonymous that is better suited to the digital world than the alternative, which is the phone number. So the phone number obviously is a bit of a holdover from before the days of the internet, uh, which has crept its way into our digital lives, but it's not necessarily a really good fit for a lot of these digital spaces that we end up using it in. In places like messaging apps, although it might feel like a really natural thing to use, uh, there are a lot of issues with them, which we've discussed in some previous videos, which uh, maybe Tom will chuck a link up here uh, so that you can go and watch those. But uh, today we're going to be talking a bit about the session ID. So first of all, when you initially open up your session app and it shows you all these numbers and it's like, here's your session ID, where does that actually come from? How is that session ID created? Uh, and it all just starts with a simple random string of data. So every operating system or computer has what's called a secure source of randomness or basically a way to try and create a little bit of random data. So that's what we start with. Um, and then we take this random piece of data uh, and we run it through an algorithm and create your private key. So your private key uh, in the back end is how you're going to encrypt messages, you're going to decrypt messages, and it's also the thing that we're going to use to create your session ID. So initially we had our little random piece of data, uh, which was a seed that we put into this algorithm and it popped out this private key. And now we've got our private key, uh, which we're going to use as a seed and pop it into this algorithm and create our session ID. Uh, so that's how we get our session ID. It's basically all just really fancy maths um, and computer science stuff. Uh, it's pretty complicated. I probably spent, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks in my off time trying to look into some of this stuff, figure out some of this maths. It is pretty difficult, um, but there are some resources uh, which you can, we can, you can check out which will be linked down in the description. Uh, but the benefit of using the session ID is you can create it instantly. So in human terms, creating just one session ID on a device that has, you know, the power of a mobile phone, even even a really even a really comparatively old or slow mobile phone, it's pretty much going to be instant. You can create a single session ID really, really quickly, uh, which is important because in comparison to something like a phone number, uh, a phone number has a lot of hurdles that you have to jump in order to get a new phone number. You might need to go and buy a new SIM, you might need to contact your telecommunication provider, you might even need to provide various kinds of identity, there might be a multi-day wait period before the phone number is actually activated and you can receive calls and messages, uh, which is really not the way that the modern world works. You know, waiting a really long time or having to give up all this information just to have a piece of contact information really isn't ideal. And so with the session ID, it really behaves more similarly to something maybe like an email, where you can pretty much just create it instantly. Uh, and in the case of the session ID, it's created algorithmically. So there's really very little cost or no cost really uh, to creating a brand new session ID, which is really important uh, for some of the reasons that we're gonna get to later. But being able to create it really quickly means that you can get rid of a session ID. If it becomes compromised or somehow connected to your identity, you can simply make the choice to get rid of it um, or start a new session ID or you could create multiple session IDs and manage them on, on various different devices. Uh, really whatever suits you uh, or your risk profile is what you can do, which really puts the power back in the hands of the people who are actually using session, uh, which is really important to us. The other thing is security. So obviously people often talk about how long the session ID is uh, and how it's not very readable. But that length gives uh, some really important qualities. Obviously, with session IDs, there's a whole mix of numbers and characters. 
Whereas with a phone number, you've just got your numbers and it's much shorter, but also that means there are much fewer possible phone numbers compared to session IDs. Um, now in the case of a session ID, it's really important that uh, what's called the key space or the number, number of possible session IDs is really, really big. Uh, because if somebody got your session ID, because there's no central database managing all of these, if somebody was able to create the same session ID as you, it would be a big issue in terms of security and privacy because obviously all the messages that were sent to that session ID would be going to this other person that's got your session ID as well. Um, but the chances of somebody being able to get the same session ID as you are like astronomically low. So I think that there's, um, there was this number that I found that was like, if somebody was able to create a billion session IDs, um, you know, as per second and had a billion computers and ran it for a billion years, they would have less than a one in a billion chance of finding the same session ID as somebody else, which is a really astronomical number. The exact maths will put it up here. Um, and the number of session IDs, the number of different session IDs that actually can be created is also a really huge number. Once again, we'll pop it up here so that you can see just how big this number is. So really, you know, the security of the session ID, it comes from cryptography. It comes from the maths that is underlying. You don't have to rely on uh, you know, a central provider or any kind of telecommunications company that they're gonna back you up and make sure that your security uh, remains intact. So on the flip side, obviously we've got phone numbers where your phone number is connected to your SIM, right? Uh, but the problem with this is that obviously people want to be able to take their phone number with them when they get a new phone or get a new SIM. So it is possible to change a phone number and move it from one SIM to another. Uh, now most of the time people do this deliberately, obviously, like I said, when you get a new phone or something like that, um, or lose your old phone. But the problem is that this can also be done well, without the person's permission of that phone number. So sometimes we'll, you will see hackers um, or, or malicious hackers uh, deliberately go uh, to a telecommunications provider and effectively trick them into changing your phone number to a different SIM. It's called a SIM swapping attack and when we use uh, phone numbers for things like two-factor authentication or for uh, communicating really sensitive information over text, for example, this puts you in a really vulnerable position. It's going to expose you in terms of security and privacy uh, and it's a really bad thing. The other thing uh, which is an issue with phone numbers is that they get recycled. So telecommunication providers aren't going to use all the possible phone numbers. They're going to use a specific set of them. And if you decide to get rid of your old phone number, uh, eventually it's very likely that uh, that phone number will just be given to somebody else. And if there are services which you've forgotten about or left behind, uh, you might unknowingly be giving access to somebody else to get those. Or uh, once again, if, you've, if someone's got your old phone number, they might be sending messages to the wrong person which is obviously really not going to be ideal. Uh, the other thing uh, which is really important for session IDs is that they're portable. So that private key that I talked about earlier gets converted into a human readable uh, mnemonic phrase, which is your recovery phrase. So if you've ever tried to recover your session ID on a different account, you'll be familiar with the recovery phrase. Uh, it's basically just a translated version of your private key that makes it easier to store and remember. Uh, and if you've got that recovery phrase, you're gonna be able to restore that session ID elsewhere. Uh, you're gonna be able to get your account back instantly and really quickly uh, and in a secure way. And it's up to you to maintain that security of your session ID. You don't have to rely on anybody else or trust some other person or other party or company or government or anybody. It's truly up to you to keep your recovery safe your recovery phrase safe, sorry, uh, and then your account is secure and you know that for sure. The, on the flip side, once again with phone numbers, obviously they're portable as well, uh, but they enable a security flaw with SIM swapping attacks, uh, which is a really big issue. So the final point of session IDs, the final advantage they have is anonymity. So this kind of comes back to earlier when I was talking about session IDs being instant. So the benefit of this is obviously you don't need to give up any information to create one. It just uses a random piece of data uh, and you can create it straight away. So you don't give up any information when it's created and down the track, if somehow your session ID is connected to your personal identity or exposed in some way and you wanna change it, 
you can immediately just create a brand new one. Uh, so that gives you way more control over how you manage your identity online, whether you want to stay fully anonymous, pseudonymous, uh, or uh, like with me and my session ID, fully connect your session ID to your personal identity. Um, that's totally up to you and it's really important that the session ID puts that choice in your hands. Uh, once again, with the phone number, as we talked about in the video that I discussed earlier, phone numbers have a huge issue when it comes to anonymity and really offer you no anonymity at all. Uh, there are huge issues where, with phone numbers being stored in databases all over the place, being connected to your real identity, uh, being able to be used to create social graphs of you and the people that you talk to or are friends with or family with. Uh, being connected to social media accounts and used for 2FA. Phone numbers are just floating around all over the place. Uh, and they're not anonymous at all and in fact create a huge hole in your ability to be anonymous. Uh, so the session ID offers a huge advantage in that uh, regard as well. So that's pretty much uh, the, the down low on why session IDs are uh, being used in session, why we created them and the, some of the advantages that they offer over phone numbers. So hopefully this gave you a good overview over why session IDs are such a cool and important part of session. Uh, and if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, see you next time.